All right, so we're going to kick this one off today with a definition. Paranoia is defined as a mental condition characterized by delusions of persecution, unwarranted jealousy, or an exaggerated sense of self-importance. Sound like anyone you know? It sounds like a few narcissists I know. In this video, we're going to talk about potential connections between narcissism, paranoia, conspiracy theories, and most importantly, we're going to talk about how to separate their delusion from our reality. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Common Ego community. My name is Christina, and on this channel, we explore emotional abuse, its connection with spirituality, and we attempt to answer the question, where do we go from here? So if that all sounds good to you, be sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. So today we're talking about narcissists and paranoia. If you're watching this channel, you probably already realize that a narcissist has a warped sense of reality. They have a warped sense of self also. And that's kind of what leads to having that warped sense of reality. We're going to talk about all of that in a second. So first I want to talk about the different levels of paranoia. We're not talking here about somebody who might have paranoid personality disorder. But narcissists are notoriously prone to paranoia, and you may have seen it in your own relationships. Narcissists are very likely to believe that other people are jealous of them, and that other people might be out to get them or take them down. So why is this? Why are narcissists so prone to paranoia? And there's the obvious answer, that's projection. They know what they're capable of, and they assume that everyone else is capable of the same thing. But what I find really interesting about this is some of the things that we struggle with in understanding narcissism in reverse are very likely the reasons why narcissists are so paranoid. So when you're first learning about narcissism and trying to understand this other person that you thought you knew for your whole life or for years or however long that you knew this person, the biggest roadblock to understanding that person is empathy. It's the fact that they lack empathy. And we can understand this in theory. Okay, they lack empathy. And you might even be able to apply it to certain situations, but you cannot understand what it's like to live that way. But in reverse, I believe the reverse is true. They can't understand what it's like to have empathy and to have that true human connection and to really deeply care about other people. And so, it's only natural that they would assume the worst because they know what they're capable of and they can't put themselves in someone else's shoes. They can't put themselves in a person's shoes who has empathy because they, have, they just don't even know what that looks like or feels like. Knowing what the narcissist in your life has been capable of, we can imagine what it would be like to go through life thinking that everyone had no limit that everyone was capable of the same type of destruction that that person was. And this may be something that happens in the aftermath of being in a relationship with a narcissist, and that's completely understandable. But with a narcissist, it's more of a life view because they're not really capable of seeing things in any other way. Okay, so that leads us to conspiracy theories. And I want to be very clear about this. I'm not saying that everyone who believes in conspiracy theories is a narcissist, and I'm not saying that all narcissists believe in conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories can, in a way, make someone feel special or superior. Well, only I have this knowledge. It's just me and a few other people who know this stuff. This is like deep level stuff that you wouldn't know. And in a time like we're in now where so much is uncertain, whether they believe it or not, a narcissist may use conspiracy theories to get their own way. So the point that I want to make here about narcissists and conspiracy theories, it's not really so much about the conspiracy theories. We're talking about it because they may be more prone than others to believe those theories, but it's not necessarily the theories in themselves that are problematic. What's problematic is that when a narcissist believes these conspiracy theories, they are very likely to aggressively push them onto other people. And that can be dangerous. It can be dangerous because narcissists can be convincing and they can create a lot of confusion that affects the way you live your life. 
whether they believe them or not, they may latch on to these theories because they support their agenda. We can only imagine that there are tons of narcissists out there that are really struggling with all the isolation. All of us are struggling with the isolation. But for a narcissist who needs multiple sources of supply, it can be very difficult. And that's why we're hearing a lot of reports of that COVID hoover. The narcissist coming back at a vulnerable time, which is very familiar, and trying to get you to change your perception of what's going on and accept theirs. And throughout all of this, throughout your relationship with the narcissist, throughout this global pandemic, remember that narcissists are above all self-serving. If you're with somebody who you've identified as very likely a narcissist, somebody who has been emotionally abusive to you, it's important to understand that a narcissist does not care about your well-being. They don't care about your feelings. They are only trying to serve themselves. So how do you separate the narcissist's delusion from your reality? And it gets easier and easier the further away you get from this person, but I know that not everyone is away from the narcissist in their lives just yet. And even if you've recently separated or recently gone gray rock, things can feel a little bit fuzzy. And especially at times like this when there's so much uncertainty and you have somebody who's projecting their paranoia, it can just make things so much worse for you. So it's important to at least try to separate that person's reality or delusions from your own reality. One thing you can do is just acknowledge that you're dealing with a person who's prone to be paranoid. Basically everything about this disorder explains why these people would be extremely paranoid. So if you go into this knowing that they're paranoid, it might be a little bit easier to separate things. The second thing you can do if they're talking about conspiracy theories that are making you anxious or if they're trying to instill fear upon you is to consider how this might be benefiting them. Because when a narcissist comes at you with this kind of stuff, they're trying to point fingers over here and over there. They want to make you question your own thoughts and your own perception of things. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, if you dig a little bit deeper, or even just think about it for a little while, you can almost always find the connection, how this benefits them, how you thinking this certain way would benefit that person. It may be a clear cut case of manipulation. And when you recognize manipulation, you can choose to not accept the manipulation. Another thing you can do is to understand that the narcissist can't help it. They can't help seeing the world the way they see it, but you can help the way you see the world. You can see the world the way you want to see it. You don't have to accept what they want you to accept because they're telling you it's true or they're telling you you're stupid if you don't accept this, if you don't see this. You don't have to accept what they're pushing as reality. Through it all, you have the power to hold on to your truth and to your own perception of reality. You do not need this person to sort things out for you. And if you're having trouble figuring things out, maybe they say something that makes a lot of sense and you're trying to figure it out for yourself, go ahead and do your own research. The worst thing you can do is take the word of somebody who you've already identified as a narcissist. So, do some research, do some reality checking with people you love and trust, talk to other people about it. Don't take their word for it and don't let their words eat away at you either. If you're doubting anything, if you're questioning anything, find out for yourself and you can at least put it to rest. Okay, so my last tip for separating their delusion from your reality is to just start from now. Start from right now and take control over your own story. If they're telling you that you're doing something you're not doing, they're paranoid and they're accusing you of something that you're not doing. Or if they're accusing other people, or if they're talking conspiracy theories, you know what feels right to you and what doesn't. The reason why paranoia can be contagious in these relationships is because we put a lot of weight into other people's perception of us and, and of the world. Once you've identified that you're dealing with somebody who's likely a narcissist, their perception of you and their perception of the world is not ever going to be the same as somebody who is not a narcissist. It's just the facts. So don't get caught up in their story. Don't get caught up in their delusions. Just always remind yourself that this is not a person you can trust. So if you like this video, let me know by hitting the like button. And if you'd like to see more like it, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.